Hello and welcome to this video in the welding series. Here we're going to be looking at different welding techniques. We're also going to be covering the use of welding fixtures, personal safety equipment and what the welder certification means. So let's start with the different types of welding. Well to start with we're going to be looking at the most popular three types of welding. Let's start with MIG. So MIG just stands for a gas metal arc welding or GMAW. This process uses a continuous solid wire electrode which is heated and fed into the weld pool from a welding gun. The welding gun also feeds an inert shielding gas alongside the wire electrode which helps protect the process from airborne contaminants. You can see a very good cross-sectional diagram on the right here, we can clearly see the machine fed wire rod coming through the welding gun. We've got the inert gas supply. We can also see the molten weld pool against the base metal and the different elements of the weld itself. The second most popular type is TIG. So TIG is gas tungsten arc welding or GTAW. This process is an arc welding process that produces the weld with a non-consumable tungsten electrode. Now TIG welding also uses an inert gas to shield the weld pool. Again let's have a look at the cross section for a TIG welding setup. And we can see here the welding gun and that fixed tungsten electrode. We've got the inert gas supply. And in this case, we have the handheld welding rod, which is fed into the weld pool. The third type we're going to be looking at is stick welding. And this is a shielded metal arc welding or SMAW for short. So arc welding is a type of welding process using an electric arc to create heat to melt and join metals. A power supply creates an electric arc between a consumable and non-consumable electrode and the base material using either direct or alternating currents. So that's DC or AC currents. So the cross-sectional setup for the stick weld is we have an electrode holder, we have that consumable electrode and the other elements that make up this weld. Now the interesting thing here is this is more of a pull weld scenario. Whereas if I flick back to the previous slide, you can see this is more of a push weld type. So let's move into some of the other different types of weld. I'm not going to go through these in detail, but I'll just go through the headlines. If you want to read more about this, you can just pause this video and read it in your own leisure. So we have flux cord arc welding, we have energy beam welding, there's also atomic hydrogen welding, there's gas tungsten arc welding, and there's plasma arc welding. Let's switch over to welding fixtures. So why use welding fixtures? See, the objective of using a welding fixture in production is to position parts correctly every time so that the welds can be consistent as possible. By presenting the geometry of the parts to be welded in a way that allows the welder to produce a quality weld ensures higher yields with less scrap or rework requirements. Automated welding fixtures. Automated welding fixtures do more than just clamp down on metal components. They also locate workpieces to a predetermined acceptable tolerance and generally can be modified to work well with precise dimensions. Using automated welding fixtures lowers overall production costs and makes the work environment safer for the operator. They can make it easier to rapidly produce welded parts on a regular basis and with consistently high standards of quality for the entire welding process. Let's have a look at welding personal safety equipment or welding personal protective equipment, commonly known as PPE. The standard list of PPE used during welding is a welding helmet, 
which protects from radiation, flying particles of metal, hot slag, sparks and intense light. Respirator uh, protects against fumes and oxides. Flame retardant clothing and apron, this protects against heat, fire, burns and radiation. And a good pair of boots and leather gloves, which protects you from electric shocks, heat, burns and fires. Now we just want to touch on welder certifications without going into too much detail but it's important to understand that there are welder certifications or welder qualifications. So a welder certification which is also known as a welder qualification is a process which examines and documents a welder's capability to create welds of acceptable quality following a well-defined welding procedure. So in the USA, welder qualification is performed according to AWS D1.1 or ASME Section 4 and API 1104 standards. In Europe, the European Committee for Standardization or the CEN has adopted the ISO standards on welder qualification and this is the ISO 9606. In China, well, China are members of the International Institute of Welding and welders in China can become certified in a specific welding technique such as ITW, TIG, which is the TIG International Tube Welder qualification as an example. So don't forget to check out the other videos in this welding series and you can always contact us if you need any help with your projects in China. For more specialized information, visit our materials and processes page. Thanks for listening. My name is Paul Adams from Southeast and I shall see you in the next video.